this time we've got this John Deere 5200. It's got some clutch issues and some electrical issues and we're going to run through it and hopefully get it running and driving properly again. The clutch on this tractor, we're hoping we don't have to replace it. If you just press the pedal down and try to shift once and try to shift gears, you'll get gear clash. And sometimes you have to pull the pedal back up to actually get it to fully engage. But if you pump it a couple times, then you can it seems you can get it into gear. So that tells me it's probably something to do with the linkage. If we have to replace the clutch. We'll have to split the tractor here in half and pull the front off and, you know, go through that process. This one probably isn't too bad. Some tractors are worse than others for that procedure. The other thing is, this is the fuel shutoff solenoid. To get it to run, you got to plug it in. And, um, and then, of course, to turn it off, you got to pull it out, so... We're going to look into that as well. There is a wire going there. There's also, I think, a battery drain. Um, so we've got the battery disconnected. So probably going to be looking into the battery drain as well. There's also on the back, there's something about, uh, I think there was a rumor that the PTO doesn't shut off properly on this tractor. And there is this pump stuck on the PTO, which we're going to try to get off. What else? That might be it for this tractor, which is actually a good bit because the electrical is going to be some fun work. take this cover off to actually dig into the clutch pedal linkage. Also we got to get in here to uh, check the wiring harness. There's not a lot of wiring on this tractor. Uh, we definitely want to try to find that voltage drain. Obviously there's lights and everything which is pretty standard um, and your standard gauge package but You know, and it has, I believe this is turn signals, or it should be turn signals. Um, but other than the lights and things, and, you know, the ignition and the alternator, these things are pretty simple as far as electric goes, so. Uh, but most of the, you know, the switch and all the gauges and everything are back here, which we're going to look into there. Sometimes mice get in there and start chewing or something, but we'll look into that. Main thing here is we're going to take this cover off. That's going to be step one. Oh, as far as the clutch goes on this thing, it, it, it drives fine. It doesn't seem to slip when you get it engaged, as long as you kind of pump up that clutch first. And if you get the clutch engaged, you can shift gears fine without any gear clash. Um, and like I said, there's no, there doesn't appear to be any slippage while you're driving on the short little test drive that I did. And all the gears seem to work and everything properly, again, without any slippage. So I'm really leaning towards probably the linkage on this thing. I'm, I'm hoping. We'll see when we actually get it apart and, you know, what we got going on there, but... All right, I've been delaying long enough. Without further ado, let's dig into this thing. Well, we got the cowling removed here and, you know, the usual nests and things. And boy, is it dirty, packed full of dirt, which makes me wonder, uh, you know, is the clutch packed full of dirt? I've got an inspection cover here that's clearly been removed. I'm going to take a look down inside there and not just removed, it's... Oh boy, I have to figure something out for that to cover that up again. I wouldn't be surprised if 
and the bolts are snapped off and I wouldn't be surprised if something got up in there or something. Anyway, we're going to take a look. Now we can get to all our electrical, our relays, we're back here and all that stuff. Probably clean this up while we're inside this thing, but we can uh, make sure the linkage and everything is free here for the clutch, which it is for the most part. Uh, so and the stops and everything are adjusted correctly. So I'm thinking we're going to look down at that inspection port and see what's going on. Just the fact that that is off, you know, somebody else was probably in there. So that's never a good sign. That means somebody said, oh, too much work. Or they just snapped the bolts off years ago and whatever. So next step is to try to inspect the clutch. And maybe while we have this apart, we'll look at the, well, we'll clean it, but we'll look at either the, well, both the battery drain and the starting issue with the fuel shutoff solenoid. Now, there's not much to prevent you from splitting this tractor, but there's, on each side, there's a bolt back here, and this plate, you know, it's mostly decorative, but it blocks that off. So on each side, you got to take these plates off. So basically, it's just a couple of bolts and then that'll come off. Fuse block comes with it. Well, does it? No, fuse block does not come with it. Take those uh, plates off, take the bolts out, and then you can get to that. Uh, just for reference, there is an access plate on the top. You can take this plate off here. There's two, two bolts, one on each side, and then that plate comes off. And then you can use your, uh, you can see down in there, for adjustments if need be. I don't think adjustment is our issue. Pedal free play looks good. It's about it's about uh, half an inch. I didn't measure it but I'm just looking at it and it looks okay. About uh, half inch before it actually starts engaging the clutch. So that's good. I think we're gonna have to split this and take a look at it. There's there's an access cover here missing, and I'm just hoping stuff didn't get down in there. If you look at that, both linkages move. When you move the clutch pedal, the, the lower linkage moves there, so I'm wondering if there's not some kind of binding issue going up in there. But there's no access plates back where the linkages are, so there's really no way to know uh, unless you take it apart. So unfortunately, I think that's what we're going to have to do. Once you have your two bolts for your plate taken out and your one bolt for your fuse block, you just pull your fuse block aside here and this plate will slip right out. And the same over on this side. Once you have your two bolts taken out, just take that plate out, set it aside. Now we can access these two upper bolts on the transmission. Before I get too much further here and get brackets and stuff in the way, I'll make sure I can actually get the bolts loose here, so. <coughs> oh, okay. That one actually cooperated. Two down underneath. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. Go to the other side. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, good, okay. All right, so we can get all the bolts out. That's the main thing other than some little bit of final prep here. So we took off the large hydraulic line that went back there. <clears throat> that's just hose clamps and disconnect with the rubber lines and and remove that portion we're gonna have to disconnect this steering line because it goes up and then through the well what I would call the firewall <clears throat> in the automotive world to the steering box and then this line goes to the steering box as well we're just gonna kind of, as we pull it forward we're just gonna kind of thread these around the fuel filter here 
this one and this one. So we won't disconnect them at the steering box because it's really hard to get in there. Uh, you need to get some wrenches in there and do that properly. I really need to pull the brake pedals and well, uh, I could do that, but we're gonna try to avoid that. Pulling the brake pedals isn't too bad because it's just pulling this pin out and you know, then you pull them out because it's just a hydraulic, uh, presses on the hydraulic actuator there, but <clears throat> we're trying to do this with uh, removing as little as possible. So uh, the uh, high pressure hydraulic line from the pump here, uh, we're gonna disconnect it here. And obviously from the pump we already have, and that's draining. And then we just gotta pull this fuel line and our electrical connectors, I believe on the other side, or we have to disconnect this throttle shaft, which is not too difficult. It's just a pin. And this other steering line here, uh, again, we're gonna disconnect that and we're gonna uh, take it backwards with the main unit. I gotta pull the hood off because the hood's gonna stay with this part and we're gonna lose our hood prop. So that's just, you know, a couple bolts, just zip zip and uh, here and we'll pull that off and then we should be ready. Crack this other steering line loose over here. The throttle pin. put the pin in right that's what you got <laughs> okay there's our throttle that'll just add it in here like this I'm just gonna set it in there I'll have to replace that pin Now I can see that fuel line down in there. Very crusty. Uh, I'll wipe that off so we can, I can't even tell what kind of clamp it is. <laughs> Standard hose clamp, but you wouldn't know it. even tight. I'm sure that's a good sign. That's all right. It ran. That's all that's important. Right? Oops. Make sure to get diesel in your eye when you do that. Get our electrical connections undone here. And then push this fuel line over here. Take that off. Cap those first. So we can cap that one off and then we can move our pan. Let's go to the steering line right here. Let that drain a bit and we can cap them off. That's what we're doing. Cap that. Leave that at the back. That'll make it easier anyway to get our lines around here. Maybe that's the proper procedure. I'm sure all you John Deere mechanics out there will let me know in the comments. And that's fine because we like to learn you know, preferably without paying John Deere for training. <laughs> okay, I gotta take that 
There's a bolt on the alternator. I got to get this wire off. I don't see a plug for that. That's just a direct wire. So pull that off. These will fold back here. They're going to go with the front of the tractor. And looks like we can cap off our steering lines down there. Take the one off on the other side. And then we'll be pretty well good to go, I guess. We're splitting this thing. There, that should stay out of the way. Over to the other side. Like watching paint dry isn't it while well, that's dripping let's uh, take off this alternator wire that needs to be removed is this just my goodness it's brittle with age well sorry but we're not gonna be putting that back on I don't think let's just say that's about the least of its worries Why could they make that any harder to get to? Yes, I have the battery disconnected for those of you going, ah! If you don't believe me, see, there, it's disconnected. See, 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 see? Once in a while, I do do things correctly. I, I know it's rare, but it does happen occasionally. I called it the alternator, it's the starter, because I'm an idiot. Well, they used the starter for Big junction block of sorts. Okay, the one in the back is the one we need to get off, of course. Put that back on loosely. Okay, now we got our wires loose there. Everything is pretty much disconnected here. These two hydraulic lines for the steering are gonna travel, are gonna stay with the back. We're just gonna pull the front off around them. Should be enough room here if we massage our wiring. I should just pull straight back. And on the other side, we got the same deal. The steering line is gonna go back, is gonna stay with the back of the tractor. And the throttle linkage is gonna stay with the front of the tractor. And then we can just separate it. So now we can get our splitting stand and everything set up. Just gotta cap these lines and then we'll be good. You wouldn't know it, but for a very short time in my career, I worked in a clean room facility, repairing the tools that make semiconductors. And now this is kind of the exact opposite of that, you know. No shop, no floor outside but you know what you get to be your own boss and just say the semiconductor field pays very well and I had to leave for personal reasons but I'm not terrifically unhappy that I did being rich is not everything in life I still get to do what I enjoy which is repairing things and making things functional and all right, she is ready for the split and stand. We did not lose as much fluid as I thought. Just a little bit of fuel and hydraulic fluid. I don't know, we got less than half a gallon in there. I'm actually kind of surprised. I figured pulling those hydraulic lines would drain a lot more than that, but that's good. That's less waste. And, uh, of course, less money for the customer putting fluids back in the tractor. So, yeah, that's a good thing. So, for splitting this tractor in the field, here's what we're going to do. We got our stand hooked up and bolted to the tractor. We got 
pulling power, 15,000 pound winch, you know, about 14,000 pounds too much. That's fine. Uh, got our stand over here. These straps are to stabilize the stand to make sure it doesn't wobble back and forth. Um, I didn't go to the extra trouble to weld extra struts and things. It's just, this isn't a tremendously heavy tractor, so. Uh, we got the back held up by our uh, highly over-engineered railroad jack. And we got jack stands on the back for backup. This one's just under the step here because these are emergency anyway, in case it falls, just so it doesn't kill me. And, uh, yeah. The other one is actually under the frame of the, of the tractor here. So we got our railroad jack under the transmission. So the idea is that we're gonna take out the bolts that I loosened earlier, which are the only thing holding this together. And then we're just gonna ease it forward just a little bit at a time, make sure everything is lined up on the level. We can adjust each side of the stand with the trailer jacks, which again are way over capacity, but that's fine. I think I over-engineered this whole thing, but you know, that's pretty good. Uh, we got our safety backups in place. We got our straps. These wheels in the middle will keep the thing from, you know, slanting too much, but the straps are there as a backup. Jack stands are there as a backup. As long as this thing comes off nice and straight. Uh, I think I got the steering aligned straight, so we'll check that as we go as well. Because uh, the straighter we pull it off, the easier it'll be to slide it back on again. Alright. This could go really bad. Or it could go really good. Or it could just go. I don't know. Let's see what happens. So I've got the two bottom bolts backed out about half an inch. They're still in there a little. I want to make sure as I start to pull it that it starts coming out completely straight and it's not going to pop and wobble. So I'm just going to pull a little bit and then we're going to check how level the sections are. Okay, we pulled it for those bolts. Now I can see where the pin, locating pin dowels are as well. I think we're relatively level. All the bolts are free. Make sure we're not binding on any wires or lines here. Make sure they all clear as we pull it away. Let's creep her a little bit more. Very dirty bell housing. Make sure we're there. Got 
which is okay. A lot of rust in here, which kind of be expected because it was open to the weather. Let me bring you in here and show you what, you, what we got. So we got a lot of dirt in here. Back there, I don't know if you can see it. I gotta get a flashlight. It looks like there's a mound of mouse nest. Uh, Thrall bearings are a little worn. They've got some rust spots and pitting on them. Um, the clutch itself is very rusty. It looks like it was sitting in water or something. Yeah, like there was a water level across the transmission. Um, which again, that's kind of what it looks like I'm seeing here because we were open to the weather. Uh, it's actually dripping water there as it, as it sits. Everything is tremendously rusty. And I won't know, I can't see in there, so I don't know what the clutch plates and uh, and pressure plates actually look like. But the, the throwout bearings and linkages don't seem to want to move. The shaft is free, and uh, I believe this is the traction. Do I have it backwards? And this is the PTO, I think. Can't remember. One or the other, I don't know. Uh, but, yeah. Let me get a flashlight and see what kind of nest we got back there. Yeah, so that's what was back in there. I kind of scooped it out and brought it forward. Uh, it's a mixture of things. I don't know if it's a nest or just packed material getting in through the excess holes. So anyway, top cover's in place up there. I think step one is I want to look at these I want to look at the linkages here I, I'm not they definitely haven't been greased in an age I'm gonna play with this linkage and see if I can loosen them up they they don't want to budge so we got the linkage out of the well we got the linkage off the front of the nose and although the throw out bearings again like I said the actual bearings are pretty good it's just incredibly dirty and grimy. I didn't want to slide it first till I started trying to persuade it and everything. So we're gonna clean this up. I think it'll actually be serviceable once it's clean, but we're gonna give it a good cleaning and we're gonna clean the shaft. So if you're not aware how this thing works, well, there's there's two of these and they slide in here like this oh, they do when they're and as this shaft turns which goes through here as this shaft turns it basically turns this and as you can see this doesn't want to turn and the reason is because these are the ones loose well sort of loose this one is just completely bound up. So you're not gonna get, you're gonna get a little bit of movement just from tolerance there, but you're not gonna be able to get. Anyway, so we're gonna have to press that out. The other one's just as bad. These actually aren't too worn, but we're gonna have to clean them. And again, no grease fittings. I don't know what you do when the grease wears out of these things. You gotta take it apart, split the tractor and grease it again, I guess. So we're gonna clean and grease everything and that should fix all our linkage issues, but we're gonna have to press this pin out. Yeah, I don't know why you couldn't shift gears. Okay, we got rotation. Come on, penetrating oil, do your thing. I've used about three cans of penetrating oil on this tractor so far. I'm not kidding. Excellent. Okay. 
So we've got another one of these to do this with. This is just one. We're gonna clean these up and get all the rust off. And then we're gonna clean up inside that bell housing. So you can see the before clean up after we got this assembly off. We're gonna clean these up and put it back together. And we're gonna clean the bell housing and put that back together. And that should solve our linkage issues. And then we'll address the clutch. I don't know what we have to do with the clutch yet. So this whole, this whole uh, housing shaft, what's it called? I don't know. It's totally corroded and uh, not totally, but I believe there's supposed to be grease in this groove here and there's nothing other than what I sprayed to try to get it off. Well, we got the bell housing about as cleaned out as we need it to be. I'm not gonna scrub it perfectly clean because uh, at the end of the day it's just a bell housing but <clears throat> uh, it took way longer than I figured to clean and free up the linkage parts which I haven't put back in yet we're gonna address the clutch you need special John Deere tools to check the finger heights and all that so when you buy a new clutch it's either pre-assembled or you have to find the tools to adjust these fingers uh, we're going to take measurements before we take it apart. We're going to index the parts so that we can get them back in the correct alignment so that, you know, part A is aligned with part B, aligned with part C. John Deere does not publish the specs of their tools. The manual you buy says refer to section 299 for tool fabrication. It's a dealer fabricated tool. And they do not sell you section 299 with the manual you can buy. So you can't fabricate the tool yourself. You can't find it online by any aftermarket suppliers. And I haven't checked with John Deere yet, but they probably charge a gazillion dollars for it. If we can reuse all these parts, we're gonna recreate those measurements when we put them back together. I'm going to start off with the assumption that this was an adjusted unit when it was installed. So if we re recreate those adjustments logically, we will have a working clutch, assuming that everything is okay inside. I think the main problem was the, the linkage sticking up, but we won't know for sure till we get it apart. You never know if we had clutch slippage issues because of the linkage, we could have overheated pressure plates or worn clutches or worn pressure plates, but we won't know till we get it apart. So let's dig into this thing. So the way this clutch comes off is there's, I believe there's 12 of these bolts. You pull these bolts and then this whole clutch assembly comes off. This inner pressure plate stays attached to the flywheel until you unbolt that separately. So this is the clutch assembly here that comes off and then we can set that on the bench and take a look at it. I'm holding the flywheel over here through the access port with a pry bar. These aren't high torque. I think the spec is like 27 foot-pounds or something like that. So you shouldn't have to fight to get them off. If you do, then something else is wrong. Last bolt is all that's holding it on. Okay, I got it. Appears to actually be in good shape. Obviously, we'll clean that up. Pilot bearing is in good shape. It's so basically the way this comes apart. We're gonna take our measurements and things, but the way this comes apart is you gotta take off the clutch fingers, which are the bolts there, but. Before we do that, oh, a bunch of junk fell out. That's not a good sign. Before we do that, we're going to take our clutch finger height measurements, and then if everything is okay, then we can put it back together the way we found it. So the parts are indexed. Now we can take this apart.
we can check well, that pressure plate looks good too uh, we can check disc thickness Okay. Pressure plate. Clutch. Yep. Okay. So the net result here is that the clutch discs are within John Deere minimum specifications. However, the traction clutch is worn severely more than the PTO clutch. Obviously, there's a lot of clutch material, dust, and corrosion, which can be cleaned up. Might be more hour, might be more uh, hours of labor and parts. The clutch fingers ought to be replaced because they they're worn unevenly. When we're taking those measurements, like they're the fingers are different thicknesses which you can account for with adjustments, but probably the time and labor and energy to do all that versus just getting a new assembly um, and replacing the worn parts selectively, it's probably about the same as an assembly. So it's probably worthwhile just to put a new assembly in because it'll last longer because there'll be more clutch thickness. So we're gonna contact the customer and see what they wanna do. Well, we have tried and tried to get this pump off using proper and some improper methods and it doesn't want to come off so the customer has decided that we're just gonna pull the whole PTO assembly and press it off the shaft well I'm not going to they're going to um, so the manual if it's to be believed says if we pull the cover bolts we can pull the whole PTO assembly out with the pump attached and then they can put it on their press and press the shaft out. So uh, they said, take the cover off and we'll come pick it up and press it out and bring it back to you. And okay. Filter here. Got the gasket all scraped. And we're going to get another pan and drain the rest of the oil here. clean that I think well this one's getting kind of long and showed how to take everything apart and everything and we're waiting for parts so while we're doing that I figure we can get part two ready so thanks for coming along here uh, on our tear down of this John Deere 5200 uh, if you want to see us put it back together then uh, feel free to subscribe so you'll get that notification when this comes out and uh, Thanks for watching. <gasps> Will you shut up, you dumb bird? What is with that bird? Interesting. Shut up. Oh my goodness, that bird, I'm gonna kill it. Where's my shotgun? Shut up. And then we can kill a couple birds with one stone. Wish I could kill that bird with a stone, but he's too far up there.
You talk a lot for a camera person. <laughs> <laughs> this clutch is appropriately called OMG. <laughs> to have some linkage or hydraulic issues with the pedal. Um, if you just 